gentlemen, welcome to the first ever Risk of Rain Monster Madness! What you are about to watch is an electric 1v1 single elimination bracket between 64 monsters and survivors from Risk of Rain 2. I have seeded every monster from 1 to 64 based on how well I thought they would do. So here are the rankings. In today's video, we will see the entirety of rounds 1 and 2 of the tournament, with the finale coming soon. So hit that subscribe button with notifications on so you don't miss the incredible final rounds. And I want every person watching this video to comment down below who you think is going to take home the title. With all that being said, I would like to welcome you all to the opening round of Risk of Rain Monster Madness! Coming all the way from a moment hole, we have the one seed, Twip Twip the Devotee! And Twip Twip's 64th seed opponent comes from down in the wetland aspect, we have the Jellyfish! And the fight begins, Twip Twip, for and it's over. Twip Twip takes the first round. Up next, we have an extremely anticipated matchup with the 33 seed Mercenary going up against the 32 seed Captain. Let the battle commence between Captain and Mercenary. I don't know where Mercenary went. There he is, he's back. Okay, Mercenary comes in against Captain. Oh my goodness, Mercenary solos. <laughs> Mercenary takes the dub on Captain. Up next should be a pretty easy victory for the Stone Titan at Seed 17 up against the 48 Seed Bighorn Bison. Here we go, and it begins Bighorn Bison. Is he ready for the charge? Stone Titan has seen it. Not a lot of damage coming out. This could be a slightly longer fight here. The Bighorn Bison getting easy hits on the Stone Titan. Oh, the laser is coming out from the Stone Titan. It doesn't look like he's messing around, although the Bighorn Bison almost running away from it. Bighorn Bison trying to avoid it. This could do it right here. This is a lot of damage focused in. Bighorn Bison staying alive. I would imagine that Stone Titan has a lot more health. Definitely our most valiant effort coming out from the Bighorn Bison so far. It does keep hitting the tree. That probably is going to lose him this round. Here comes the laser. Does the Bighorn Bison survive the fist? No. That'll do it. Stone Titan moves on to round two. Up next, we have one lonely geek up against the terrifying 16 seed of the Magma Worm. The battle begins. I think we all know how this one's gonna go. The Geep only has the one attack. How long is the Geep gonna last? Keep in mind the, uh, the Gips that it will inevitably spawn technically do count as part of it. So I will let the battle continue once the Gip spawn. The Geep has done 16 damage to the Magma Worm. Another resilient showing. From an underdog, a big underdog, Magmaworm is kind of just toying with his food at this point. We have two Gips alert. We have two Gips. Magmaworm is looking healthy as ever. They certainly are trying their best, but the Magmaworm is coming in with vengeance here. The Magmaworm has taken out both Gips and is victorious. Moves on to round two. In our next round, we see another top 10 seed with the 9 seeded Imp Overlord taking on the 56 seed Void Reaver. Let the battle begin. Void Reaver is immediately trying his best with only one attack and the explosion at the end not counting. Void Reaver, known for the bulkiness, is the bleed gonna kill quickly or slowly i think that's all we have to ask ourselves right now the void reaver is standing right in the bleed explosion have you learned nothing mr reaver the only chance it has is maybe something falling off the map here but i don't think it dies anyway we're playing on monsoon for all these matches so the void reaver 
I think just has to stand around and be defeated. That is so much bleed, and the Void Reaver wins technically taking the Imp Overlord with it, but we're gonna count that a win to the Imp Overlord. Moving on to the second round. Now we move to the Battle of the Bird, something I did not do on purpose, just how the bracket landed. 41 seed Alloy Vulture versus the 24 seed Heretic. It begins Bird versus Bird. Will they find each other? I don't even think they know each other exist right now. Oh, they've seen Alloy Vulture with the first strike. Heretic needs to find his way over there. Nothing making purchase so far. Alloy Vulture using that aerial attack so far. The Heretic going invisible. Let's see how it works. If a Ruin stack ends here, and that'll do it. The Ruin comes through. Alloy Vulture stood no chance. We move on to a match that should go relatively the same. We have the 25-seeded Void Fiend versus the 40-seeded Brass Contraption. Let the battle begin. Void Fiend is in immediately doing massive damage, not missing a shot. Brass Contraption stood no chance there. Up next, we have back-to-back -back super underdogs with the 57-seeded Little Baby Gip going up against the 8-seed Stage 5 boss, the Grandparent. Here we go, little tiny Gip up against the giant that is the Grandparent. I think we all know how this one is going to go. I almost got stuck in the little beam. Gip's not doing much. Here comes a rock. Gip tanks the rock going in for a crotch shot at Gip. The grandparent, over there. You might want to, yeah, get over there. Get ready to shoot. Here he comes. He's going to spike. I can feel it. Oh. oh, I don't think he's doing a whole lot. I need to get out of those. He does spike. There's some damage done. Another rock comes through. The grandparent might just have this one in the bag. The Gip's got gumption. Okay, I'll give it that. Gip gets stuck in the gravity ball. Here comes a rock. Is it going to finish the job? Yes, it does. Grandparent moves on to round two. A similarly unbalanced matchup with the five seed of the overloading worm going up against the mere 60 seed void barnacle that cannot even move. The match begins. Void barnacle takes the first shot. I don't know if he makes contact or not. The overloading worm getting closer and whoa, a direct hit. Is the void barnacle gone already? It is. The overloading worm takes it with ease. Next up, we have a matchup that has existed as long as the moon has. We have the number 37 seed, the Lunar Chimera Golem, taking on the 28 seed Acrid. Now, this is what I could see going either way. The battle begins. Acrid coming in immediately from the jump with good attacks. That poison coming through. The Chimera Golem might have the pure damage, but Acrid's got the mobility and that poison stacking. I really could see this one going either way. We'll see how it ends up. The Chimera Golem just needs to get Acrid away. And wow, the Chimera Golem. I think that high HP pool allows it to take out Acrid. Move on to stage two. Two very differently balanced aerial enemies coming in here. We have the 21 seed Lunar Chimera Wisp, a danger on the moon. And the 44 seed Soulless Probe coming from the Soulless Control Unit. Let's see who takes this win. Soulless Probe attacks first. The Chimera, I would imagine, is going to hit a whole lot harder. Look at the knockback go crazy. That damage is hard to withstand. Impressive that it has survived once the first aerial battle we've had in the tournament so far. That... Okay, the probe is honestly putting in work so far. That laser does not miss, but neither does the Chimera. And that's a massive hit. The Chimera Wisp takes the victory. One of our most unbalanced matches yet comes with the 53 seed Larva versus the 12 seed Soulless Control unit. We just saw his son perform. How does he do against this ground limited enemy? Wow, okay, damage to the control unit. We all know how this, oh. Yeah, we all knew how it was gonna go. Solo's control unit moves on to round two.
with another air versus ground battle. We have the 52 seed Blind Vermin versus the 13. Teen seed wandering vagrant. Now I don't think this one goes well for the blind vermin and there it is round over Up next we have everyone's favorite ally the beetle guard at seed 45 taking on the frightening Clay Templar at seed 20. The Beetle Guard has an uphill battle here because this damage is so intense. If that Beetle Guard doesn't get close, we could have an issue. Two different enemies here, a close and a far. The Beetle Guard has a chance here if he plays it just right. Although that uh that push is brutal. There is a slight chance the Beetle Guard being tarred, making him slow. That was a bad decision on the Beetle Guard's part, and the Clay Templar takes it. We now have a match that could go either way. We have the 36 seed Elder Lemurian versus the 29 seed Rex. Now here's the thing, I do think the Elder Lemurian could take this, but he has to get in close. Rex has that healing, has that root. If he can keep him away, Rex has a chance here. This one could genuinely be close and Rex does take it. The upset does not happen. In this next matchup, we have a fan favorite with the number four seed Mythrix against a fan unfavorite in the 61 seed Hermit Crab. Let's just get this one out of the way. Hermit Crab does survive a singular swipe, runs away. Mythrix coming right in though. I do not think this Hermit Crab stands much of a chance against Mythrix here. It is phase one Mythrix. Don't know if that makes much of a difference. He is... Maybe getting a little too overzealous. It is just a hermit crab. Oh, he's coming down though. This could end very soon. The hermit crab really is taking his best shots. Mythrix is go doing way too much here, to be honest. You are doing far too much. And the hermit crab sends off that. Mythrix, you don't have to go chase him. You don't have to do that. Now the number three seed in the entire tournament, Voidling, takes on the 62 seed Alpha Construct. Let's watch it. It is one little guy versus the entire Voidling. There's 15 damage, 30 damage, 45 damage, 60 damage, and the Alpha Construct, uh, wow. The fact that it survived that, this Alpha Construct is stronger than me for real, for real. This probably does it here. The Alpha Construct is down. Voidling obviously moves on to round two. Up next, we have what could be a matchup of the ages. The 35 seed Commando versus the 30 seed Engineer. This one could be close. It really just depends on who uses their abilities better. Engineer's gotta put a turret down, throw some mines, start to do something. Uh, it is, okay, bubble shot. Oh, Engineer takes down Commando just like that. Who knew it would be that easy? Now we have a very interesting matchup with the 19 seeded Void Infester versus the 46 seed Greater Wisp. Now I will say going into this, if the Void Infester takes, oh. Up next we have the 51 seeded Blind Pest. You just have to walk in a circle. But our 14 seeded Clay Dune Strider might be too big to avoid the bullets. Let's see how it goes. The Clay Dune Strider is here. The Blind Pest is shooting 25 damage. It begins here. Can the Clay Dune Strider deal with the aerial enemy? It looks so wow. Clay Dune Strider moving on to round two with ease. This next matchup really only goes one way. We have the 11 seated Beetle Queen versus the 54 seated Lunar Chimera Exploder. The Chimera is not going to be able to do much to the Beetle Queen, if anything at all. They seem to be pretty peaceful to start off. Beetle Guards coming out. The Chimera now has a much bigger battle. Oh man, the Chimera immediately getting pelted. I don't think it has much of a chance. It might have a little bit of a higher health pool. But it's just not outputting the damage and is defeated. The Beetle Queen not even in the pool. 
We have another matchup that could, in theory, go either way, though I do think the 22 seed Railgunner will take out the 43 seed Gup. But remember, the Gup counts as the Geeps and the Gips. That is an enormous amount of damage. Gups do a lot of damage to a little Railgunner like that. So if Railgunner's not careful, Gup could take the upset here. Railgunner really just using that M1, not using the M2 at all. The AI of Railgunner doing him kind of dirty. Gup backing him to a corner. You can't imagine Railgunner has that much health left. One more spike might kill. And there it is, Gup with the upset. Moving on to the second round. Another matchup that truly could go either way depending on who uses what abilities. We have the 27th ranked Artificer versus the 38th ranked Clay Apothecary. The battle begins immediately. Artificer avoiding the first shot. Great hit on the Nano Bomb. Fire coming in big. That's a ton of damage on the Tar Pit. Wow, the Clay Apothecary is pulling up the upset. And moving on to the next round. Now, if you're looking for that perfect bracket, here is a match that is pretty easy to decide. The six-seeded Z-Construct versus the 59-seeded Lesser Wisp. Now, this Wisp surely just has no chance. Three sets of five damage is not going to compare to even the turret Z-Construct sweeps. Up next, we have the seven-seated Alloy Worship unit from Siren's Call up against a Mini Mushroom. Here we go, the Mini Mushroom and Alloy Worship unit are getting started. The Alloy Worship unit hitting hard. The Mushroom missing with the only attack it has, and it is over already. Alloy, on to the second round. As we start to approach the end of the first round, we have a matchup that... Could be a little close. We have the 39 seed Void Jailer versus the 26 seed Bandit. You see, if Void Jailer can keep Bandit away, there's a chance. Bandit completely invisible. Where is he? There he is. He is jailed. Does the Void Jailer have the damage to take him out? Bandit staying invisible, not moving. Void Jailer obviously there with a lot of health. Takes out Bandit. Void Jailer with the upset. Here is a matchup that is semi-close on paper, but I do not think it'll be close in the game. The 23 seed Loader versus the 42 seed Parent. My intuition tells me that Loader should have this in the bag. The grapple happens. Loader moving a little bit too fast for his own good, but the little machine putting in work. Loader off the map should come back. Here we go, Loader versus Parent. Throwing some punches. Loader not using the skills very well. Uh, Parent not doing a whole lot of damage. Loader could throw here. The Parent doing some serious damage, but Loader. I don't know by how much, but ekes away with the first round W. Up next in our round one matches, we have the 55 seeded gamer host, I mean Lemurian, up against the 10 seed Void Devastator. Now the Lemurian has potential here to deal 10 damage. After that, I don't know how good he's gonna do. I'm so sorry, Lemurian. You have been eliminated. Void Devastator moves on to round two. Up next, one of the best bosses in the game, the 15-seeded Grove Tender, taking on one of the best adds in the game, the 50-seeded Imp. Grove Tender versus Imp here on Distant Roost. Grove Tender moving in first. <laughs> Imp off the map. Spawns back up here. The Wisps are still tracking. That Imp better put in some work if he wants to win. They are continuing the battle, the Imp. Taking some shots, a little bit of bleed coming out, but getting absolutely obliterated. Grove Tender moves on. In the next match, we have a mother and son matchup. We have the 18-seeded Aurelianite facing off against the lowly 47-seed Stone Golem. Now, the Stone Golem might be able to do a little bit of damage here, but once Ori gets that laser coming in, I think it is most certainly all over. Look at how powerful that is. In one laser, Ori takes the win. 
Our second to last matchup has one of the closest seed differentials in the tournament. We have 31 seed multi versus the 34 seed mobile survivor Huntress. This one truly could go either way. Multi moving around, getting a little bit of damage on. Huntress with arrow rain, hits a glaive. Multi shooting very poor. Is it over already? Multi obliterating Huntress in the blink of an eye and dying to arrow rain afterwards, but it doesn't count. Multi moves on. And for our final matchup of round one, it's maybe the most unbalanced of the entire tournament. We have the number two seeded scavenger versus the 63 seeded lowly beetle. Well, this should be the quickest round yet. Scavenger lining up a shot and the beetle survived an attack. This is an average beetle. Not doing any funny stuff here. The beetle does survive again. <laughs> How is this beetle still alive? I do not think it'll get close to the scavenger, but the beetle put up such a good fight. Scavenger waltzes on to stage two. And that concludes our first round, which means only 32 of the competitors remain in the running to take the title. Now we move on to the second round of the tournament where things start to heat up and we get to see which of the remaining monsters are real contenders for the title. Our first match of the second round of 32 monsters begins with the one seed once again, Twip Twip the Devotee. Pairing up against Twip Twip is the 33 seed Mercenary. I think we both know how this is going to go. Mercenary is simply going to give it his best shot, trying to use those iframes to his advantage, but whoa. Oh, Twip Twip, that was disrespectful. Up next, we have a very close match between the 17-ranked Stone Titan and the 16-ranked Magma Worm. This should be a very interesting matchup between two boss enemies. Magma Worm, obviously more mobile, does perhaps a little bit less damage than the Stone Titan with that fist, but more consistent. Stone Titan's going to have trouble connecting a lot of the shots. Now remember, both of these competitors have a very high health pool being bosses in the game. Neither of them with any healing capabilities, so any damage is good damage. Stone Titan also acting as a very big target for the Magworm. It is hard for that worm to miss, just blasting through it. The rock is coming back. Magworm may just prove too wily for the Stone Titan to connect shots on. And wow, there you have it. The Magma Worm taking the victory. Victory laps through the stage. Magma Worm is moving on to the Sweet 16. Up next, we have an interesting matchup that could potentially go either way. We have the 24 seed Heretic up against the 9 seed Imp Overlord. And don't worry, we've added damage numbers. The first two rounds, we didn't have them. The Heretic immediately healing up. That is the one benefit the Heretic has other than being very strong. But wow, that is a powerful attack. If the Heretic does not get things under control immediately, it will not stand a chance. It, uh, yeah. Heretic, you just can't be standing in that. Our next match features a pretty big underdog in the Void Fiend at seed 25 with the 8-seeded Grandparent. Does the Void Fiend have any chance of surviving the sun? That is the question. It's going to have to go into the corrupted form. Uh, I mean, Void Fiend, known to be powerful. Grandparent, known to be maybe more powerful. Let's see if the close-up action works for Void Fiend. I don't even know where he went. Void Fiend is in that area. Not really loving it, but, you know, a strategy is a strategy. If Void Fiend can get ahead and really just take full advantage before the sun comes out. If the sun co Oh. Oh, is it over? Oh, it's over. Grandparent wins. Moves on to the Sweet 16. We have an underdog who won the first round, the 37 seed Lunar Chimera Golem, going up against the 
daunting number five seed overloading worm now let's be honest the lunar golem has a a, a a challenge ahead of it an overloading worm one of the scariest enemies in the game there's a reason he is rated at the fifth seed that golem is gonna have to play every single card correctly he's really teetering on the edge as well how much longer can he survive taking a ton of damage overloading worm takes it with ease we have another from the Lunar family, the Lunar Chimera Wisp at seed 21, but against another flying enemy, the 12 seeded Soulless Control Unit. This one could potentially be close. Here we go. The two are facing off in the middle of Wetland Aspect. The question is, will the Soulless Control Unit be able to hit the Lunar Wisp? Lunar Wisp known for its impeccable aim and speed. If the Soulless Control Unit can't connect the shots, the Lunar Wisp has a chance to take home the victory here. The Wisp also known for being a pretty tanky enemy, but all these 4s and 3s coming out is going to be tough. The Wisp is going to have to prioritize the Father Control Unit, otherwise he's going to get overwhelmed. This might just be too much work for the Wisp to handle. And the Wisp is down from the probes. Soulless Control Unit takes it home. Now here is a matchup that's going to come down to how these two battle it out. We have the 13 seed Wandering Vagrant versus the 20 seed Clay Templar. Now if the Clay Templar can stay far away, eventually that Wandering Vagrant is going to go. Wandering Vagrant not really sure what to do down here with the Templar under it. Templar could pull out the minor upset, both a little confused. The Clay Templar being far enough away, able to put about 30 or so damage in at once, but against a boss enemy, that's just not going to be enough. Every time that Wandering Vagrant goes up, although here's the thing, we have the Blast coming out. Is that enough? No, the Clay Templar is still in it. The Wandering Vagrant we now know is low because of the gloop effect. This might come down to the wire here, folks. You know a Clay Templar can't take too many more of those hits, but you know the Wandering Vagrant is low because the Genesis Loop is coming out. This is going to be a big attack. Clay Templar still in it. Clay Templar comes out with the underdog win. We now have a tale as old as time. The number four seed Mythrix against the number 29 seeded survivor Rex. I don't know if Rex stands much of a chance here, but if he doesn't get too close and can use the route to his ability, Rex almost flying off the map stays on. Mythrix certainly with the possibility of knocking him off. Gonna have a lot more health than a small Rex. Rex. With that healing ability, Mythrix does jump. Is Rex smart enough to jump over the shockwave? No, and gets absolutely destroyed because of it. Up next, we have one of the most powerful enemies in the game, the three seed, Voidling versus the 30 seed of Engineer. While Voidling spawns in, Engineer has everything set up. I don't even know where he is. I think he's under Voidling at the moment. Voidling should have this in the bag. I don't even know where Engineer is. He's on top. Engineer's on top of Voidling. He's sitting there. He is getting hit. Oh. Oh my, Voidling moves on. Last round, both of these competitors impressed with the 14 seed Clay Dune Strider and the 46 seed Greater Wisp. Something tells me the Greater Wisp will not be able to repeat the performance from the first stage. It's gonna take a lot of movement to get out of the way of those attacks from the Clay Dune Strider. 36 times two is not gonna get the job done. Oh my, these 20s are coming in hard. Greater Wisp, I'll give it to him. He is putting in the effort. He is not giving up. But Clay Dune Strider looks like it's got this one in the bag. The Greater Wisp falls. This next matchup is sure to be a fan favorite. We have the number 11 seed Beetle Queen with the 43 seed Underdog Gup, who took down Railgunner last round. Now remember, the Gup is not only the Gup, it is also the Geeps and the Gips it turns into. The Beetle Guards are going to be one of the toughest parts. Because as you can see, Gup taking a ton of damage, not doing a whole lot to the other enemies here. But 
the geeps are gonna come out the gips are gonna come out and the gup can hit multiple at once i don't have a lot of faith but i'm not saying it's impossible two geeps already now it might be impossible let's see how they do the beetle queen might be one of the hardest monsters to defeat on this list the beetle guards all going out of their way to individually deal with a gip that one's down that one's down that one's down and the beetle queen is victorious this round up next we have a battle of two scary enemies but one certainly scarier than the other who has garnered the six seed in the z construct versus the 38 seeded clay apothecary now of course we are here in the clay apothecary's home turf will that help it doesn't seem like you can even reach the z construct with the attacks z construct has taken this unbelievably quickly This next matchup has a fan favorite and a fan non-favorite. The non-favorite being the seven-seeded Alloy Worship Unit, visited by the 39-seed beloved Void Jailer. Now, of course, the Void Jailer does have a pretty good amount of damage and a high health pool, but is it enough to defeat the Shielding Alloy Worship Unit with the probes? I do not think so. There's a reason this Alloy Worship Unit is rated number 7 on the list nationwide. This Void Jailer is going to put in as much work as possible. But with a really big hitbox like that, the Alloy Worship Unit just has free reign to rain down the bullets. We were able to see Void Jailer actually jail the Alloy Worship Unit. And now that the shield is coming out, this could be interesting. This actually might be a little bit closer than we think, folks. Alloy Worship Unit might be around half health now. I don't know how low the Void Jailer is. There's no way to tell. But the Alloy Worship Unit shielding already, which is very interesting. Look at how tanky the Void Jailer is. Oh, the Void Jailer not focusing in on the Alloy Worship Unit. Is that going to come back to bite him that he's taking on the probes? This could be very close, ladies and gentlemen. Here comes another shot coming in. Void Jailer survives it. Shield comes back. We do not know the health at this point. The Void Jailer does avoid the impact zone. The Void Jailer, unfortunately, has been defeated. Could this next matchup be a story of David and Goliath? With the 23 seed Loader Survivor against the 10 seed Massive Void Devastator. This could be an interesting one. Loader comes in with the grapple. I don't know how good Loader is at the punch, but 238 damage is something. If Loader gets caught in the wrong area, I think it is just an instant kill. So Loader has to stay away from those shots. Play very safe, play very smart hook around continue moving it is over just like that void devastator moving to the top 16. this next match might be the closest one yet we have the 15 seated grove tender boss against the 18 seated aurelianite aurelianite shooting first grove tender immediately throwing wisps damage is going everywhere this could be a very close one the chains are coming out moving are we closer here come the giant gold spikes grove tender with big spike damage there making almost full contact they're doing kind of a weird little dance kind of freaking me out a little bit i can't tell if they're fighting or hugging at this point aurelianite getting hit from behind not ready and missing the spikes grove tender breathing down the neck this is a very sensual battle so far ori is trying her best but looks like she could actually be behind there. Hard to tell who is currently winning. No health bars active. Grove Tender doing a little style hop. Aurelianite connecting with the gold spikes here. And Aurelianite goes down. The Grove Tender remains the 15 seed taking out the underdog. Our final match of the second round goes to the 31 seed Multi against the second seed in the entire tournament, Scavenger. Multi can certainly try his best and will, but the Scavenger proving to be extremely powerful. Multi that slow acceleration and not very good usage of the gun. AI Multi doesn't really know what he's doing. Multi is taking cover though. Very smart on Multi's part. Multi does not seem to know what's going on gets blasted off the map will spawn back oh 
And that concludes our second round and leaves only 16 monsters left to battle it out for the title. Once again, make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss these final rounds because boy, does it get exciting from here. And let me know if your choice to win it all is still alive in the bracket. So with all that being said, I want to thank you all for watching so far, and I will see you guys in the finale of Risk of Rain Monster Madness.